All right, so I'm going to review the different ovarian follicles. Uh, but before we do that, let's just go over the different layers of the ovary. So on the outside, the ovary is surrounded by germinal epithelium, which is a simple cuboidal epithelium. Just deep to that, we have connective tissue, which is the tunica albuginea. And in the middle of the ovary, we have the medulla, which is where all the major blood vessels for the ovary are. And all the follicles will be in the cortex, so we're going to spend most of our time there. So in the cortex, uh, going in order of their maturation, uh, they all start off as primordial follicles, which become primary follicles, and then secondary follicles. And then one of the mature or graphene follicles will uh, ovulate each menstrual cycle, while all the other ones will become atretic. So uh, in our slide for the monkey ovary, we only go up to the secondary follicles, and um, we have some atretic follicles there as well, but we don't have any mature or ovulating ones, and we don't have any of these uh, corpus luteum on that slide. So here's the actual light microscopy slide. Uh, let's zoom in down here. And uh, first, let's look at the uh, germinal epithelium. You can see the simple cuboidal epithelium on the outside. Uh, this is the tunica albuginea, just deep to it. And if we look for some primordial follicles, what you're looking for is a little pink uh, blob, and it's surrounded by a simple squamous epithelium. So those uh, simple squamous epithelial cells are granulosa cells. So here's an example of a uh, primordial follicle. And you can see the simple squamous epithelium that's on the outer edge of it. Uh, this looks like it's probably another one. And you stop calling it a primordial follicle and now start calling it a primary follicle once you see that the granulosa cells become cuboidal, uh, and especially if you see multiple layers. So this one over here, um, I think it's a little hard to tell. This might be cuboidal. But if you see something like this, where it's cuboidal, you can even see a couple of different layers. There's two layers of cells here. So this is definitely a primary follicle probably an early stage of a primary follicle. This looks like over here would be a primordial one. So you can even see the nucleolus over here and one of the squamous epithelial cells on the outside, which is a granulosa cell. And if we look at, these are some nice examples of late primary follicles because there's multiple layers of granulosa cells uh, you can see the zona pellucida, this dark pink line over here that surrounds the oocyte. This whole thing here is the oocyte. Here's the nucleolus, and this is the nucleus of the oocyte. And now let's talk about the secondary follicles. So when you're looking for these, uh, what you're looking for is an area in the middle where you'll have the antral fluid. And if the oocyte is in the plane of section for that secondary follicle, it'll be pushed over to the side. Uh, but you're not always going to see the oocyte. And on this slide of the lab PowerPoint, you can see where the S's are. That's where you see some of the secondary follicles. The best example is probably this one down here. So let's take a closer look. So here's the oocyte. Uh, again, this pink band that's around it is the zona pellucida. Uh, the antral fluid is out here. And all the cells here that are immediately surrounding uh, the oocyte all around here, these are the cells that were derived from the granulosa cells. Um, it started off as that simple squamous uh, epithelium that was surrounding the oocyte, and now it's expanded to multiple layers, and now you see them here. So looking at the PowerPoint slide uh, from the lab, the cumulus oophorus cells are the granulosa cells that are around the oocyte. And the innermost layer of the cumulus oophorus has a special name. It's the corona radiata. So cells like these over here that are right next to the zona pellucida, they make up the corona radiata. And those are the cells that leave with the oocyte during ovulation. And outside all of these granulosa cells will be theca cells. And there's a very important basement membrane. You can kind of see it just uh, over here that separates the two. And this basement membrane makes this compartment on the left vascularized. 
and on the right is non-vascularized. That's a point that they kept bringing up before. Uh, the cells that are closer to the basal membrane on the fecal side will make up the theca interna, and then beyond that will be the theca externa. I wouldn't worry too much about seeing where exactly the boundaries are. It's kind of fuzzy. Uh, it's not super clear here. What's probably more important to know is just like what these cells actually do. So the theca cells, remember, they create uh, DHEA, and that can actually diffuse across the basal membrane so that the granulosa cells will convert that DHEA into a stradiol. And now let's talk about the atretic follicles. So these are the ones that are degenerating because they didn't make it to be that one dominant follicle that ovulated. Uh, so one way you can look for them is if you see a glassy membrane. Uh, so what that is, is um, so that really thin membrane between uh, the theca cells and the granulosa cells that I was showing you before, uh, just like any other basin membrane, in light microscopy, you generally can't really see the details of it because it's so small. But when you have an atretic follicle, it's actually expanded as it's degenerating. So it's thickened into this uh, mass that you see here, all of this stuff. Uh, here's another example of the glassy membrane. So this pink area here, this is all glassy membrane of an atretic follicle. Another way you can look for atretic follicles is if you see a zona pellucida that's uh, folding in on itself, it looks like it's degenerating, or if it's alone and you don't see any uh, granulosa cells around it. Actually here, it looks like you can see a piece of the zona pellucida that's uh, degenerating in the atretic follicle. So here we can see more examples of atretic follicles. Uh, looks like this area might be glassy membrane as well. And be careful that you don't mix up the atretic follicles with the glassy membrane, like these two over here, uh, with the corpus albicans. The corpus albicans is completely different, even though it might look kind of similar. So this area is corpus albicans. This is a different uh, microscopy slide. Because remember, the atretic follicles are one of these follicles that didn't make its ovulation, right? But the corpus albicans is uh, the gen degenerated uh, portion of what's left of the corpus luteum uh, when there is no fertilization and so this is a follicle that at some point had ovulated. So if we go back to this slide here, uh, this whole thing pretty much is corpus luteum. It's taken up almost the entire section of this ovary over here. This is where the antral fluid was, now it's filled with blood. Uh, so the stigma was likely over here which is where the oocyte left with the corona radiata. And if we take a closer look, um, again, we're going to have the germinal epithelium on the outside, tunica albuginea. And now we have, instead of just granulosa cells and theca cells, we have theca lutein cells and granulosa lutein cells in the corpus luteum. And these are the spellings right here. So that nice thin base of membrane that we had before in the secondary follicle, uh, that's gone now. So we uh, everything's kind of mixed together, but you can still see there's separation between uh, the theca lutein cells and the granulosa cells. So, for example, these ones over here are the theca lutein cells. They are, have less cytoplasm. Uh, they're just smaller in general. Whereas the granulosa lutein cells are these guys right here. And previously in the secondary oocyte where the theca cells uh, were vascularized, but the granulosa cells were not. Now that the uh, base of the membrane is gone, the capillaries can invade into the granulosa uh, lutein cells as well. If we look at a different part of the slide, uh, I'm not sure why this stains darker. I don't know if that's just an artifact or if that's actually significant. But you can still see the difference between the granulosa cells up here, uh, granulosa lutein cells, and the theca lutein cells down here. And just know that at this stage, the corpus luteum is producing progesterone. And that's it for the ovary.